Um, I frankly have never given a talk to people behind computers before. Um, and today is really going to be um, me directed, but you guys asking me questions, and then I can take you through how the ORCID interface works. Um, I wanted to start um, asking you all a couple questions. Then I'm going to provide a very brief overview of what ORCID is and why I think you should care about it. Um, and then I'll take you through how to register um, and how to use the interface. But frankly, from my perspective, if all we get out of this today is that you guys register, understand what ORCID does, and use your identifier as you publish and write grants, that would be fabulous. Okay? That's really what we're trying to get at here. Um, so how many of you have ever heard of ORCID before? you walked in this room. Ooh, okay. Um, how many of you are students of some sort? Okay, great. How many of you are in the library, library staff kind of people? Yay. Anybody here from the research office? Yay, excellent. We are research office people. And okay, excellent. Um, so, and also, Matthew Bayes is up here. Matthew's first day was yesterday, so he's <laughs> getting a crash course in ORCID. Um, he is available to come back. We do have a plan um, to host workshops here in Southern Africa and to in really um, work with with Matthew on um, using ORCID um, to best benefit. So, um, we are committed to being an international organization. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization as well, um, and our mission really is to improve the flow of information in the research community. We provide a persistent, unique identifier for individuals. Do I want to change the color scheme? No. Sorry. I like my color scheme. Um, so we provide a persistent identifier for individuals. Um, as you know, um, Stellenbosch is a member. They will be um, rolling out ORCID and systems over the course of the next period of time, next year, year and a half probably, um, you will start to see more communications about it. And so you guys will all have a first front step ahead of everybody um, in, the, in the university community. Um, you can use ORCID as an individual completely free of charge. Everything that we're doing today is separate from the Stellenbosch membership. So all of this, your friends, you can tell them about this, they're welcome to register. Um, the goal here is to get your own persistent identifier so that when you're using the internet that you become much more easily and accurately discoverable. Right now when you search the internet for a person, you type in their name. And I think everyone's had that experience when you type in a name and you get back a bunch of stuff, pick your browser, and it's a bunch of stuff and you're not really sure if this is the person you're looking for. What ORCID does is say let's provide people with a digital name. So you can think of it as an ID, but it's really a digital name that helps discoverability on the internet work a whole lot better. So the goal is to get people to register, use the identifier, but also for universities, funders, publishers, associations to start to include the identifier as a piece of information they capture when you become a member of an association or renew, when you submit your thesis, when you um, uh, uh, submit an abstract to a conference, when you uh, submit a manuscript, when you apply for a grant. So in addition to your name being on all these documents, that this digital name is also there. So when that document is stored on the internet and somebody runs a search on you, that that information will come back, all of your information together, instead of spread apart you know, across many variations of your name, or in the case of people who have a common name, as a big blob and you're not sure which John Smith is which John Smith. So that's what we do. We provide a name that helps distinguish researchers from each other. Okay, any questions about what we do before I talk about how the interface works? Okay, feel free to ask questions. I'm here in the flesh, that's my, you know, questions. So if you go to orchid.org, that's O-R-C-I-D dot O-R-G, is everyone there? Is anyone not there so I know to slow down? Okay, um, on that page, on the top right-hand corner is a button that says sign in. So how many of you already have an ID? Anybody have an ID in here? Okay, people who have an ID, we can just sign in with username and password. But if you click on the sign in button, you'll come to the next page, which should have a sign in thing. If you don't have a sign in, then you go down here and click on the register for an ORCID ID button. So let's click on that. And here's the registration page. 
Now, some people get a little nervous with identifiers. They're nervous about the kind of information that's going to be stored in this database and what kind of control the individual is going to have over the privacy settings of the information in this database. Okay? ORCID is a researcher driven system. Yes. More lights. Uh, less lights. Less lights. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Um, okay, so individuals own this identifier. It stays with you throughout your career. Regardless of where you work, it stays with you. And you control what information is connected to this identifier and the privacy of the information in the identifier and the organizations that have access to your record. That is up to the individual. Okay? Anyone, any organization that wants access to your record, if you make the information public, it's available to everyone. Anyone who knows the um, licenses under CC0 license, okay, it's available. If you want to make it private, it's private. No one has access to it except for you. There's also an intermediate privacy setting which is called limited access, and I'll go through this in the interface in a minute. The, inter the limited access privacy setting means that when somebody comes to the ORCID interface, either using the visual part that I'm going to show you now or with the APIs, which are the uh, ways that computers can talk to each other, they can't see your limited access or private data. Only those organizations that you specifically grant access to can see that information. And those organizations have to be ORCID members and have to have signed off on their terms and conditions and privacy policy. Okay? ORCID does not sell the data in the ORCID registry. The ORCID data, the information in that registry is controlled by the individual. I want to make that very, very clear. We also do not connect to any what we call private uh, information. We don't collect your date of birth. We don't want it. We don't collect gender, race, ethnicity. Uh, we don't collect the name of your kids, if you have any. We don't want that information. What ORCID is about is you're a researcher. You do research. It's hard to find it on the internet. How can we make it easier to connect a researcher with what they're doing in the research sphere? Papers, your data sets, your affiliations. Okay? So, this is very evident when you go to register. They're asking, we're asking for your first name, last name, an email address, a password. You can set the default privacy. So here we have public. Here we have what I said, limited access. And here we have private. If you're interested to learn more, that's the little help icon. Okay, so for new things added to your record, you can set it default public. This is generally what people do. Um, there's a notification question here, um, and there's a terms of use. You have to click this button and hit the register. So I'm going to assume that folks have already registered. I'm going to go back to my sign in page and sign in, and I'll do this sitting down. If you haven't used ORCID before, when you come to this page, there'll be very little showing. They'll have your name, um, and it'll have your ORCID ID displayed, and pretty much nothing else. Now, again, like I said, the goal here is to register and use the ID. ORCID is not a profile system. There are many other profile systems that are out there that are wonderful. ORCID is a system to connect you. This user interface here is to show you what you're connected to and allow you decisions on how to share that information. Okay? Um, so, uh, you can, if you want, add a short biography. None of this in here is mandatory in any way. Um, over here under name, um, there's a cute thing here. We can get a QR code. So if you're giving a poster or a presentation, you can actually order some QR codes. Those are those little uh, boxes. Um, and stick it on your poster. People can then scan it and come straight to your ORCID record to learn more about you. So that's a little handy thing. What I would suggest that you do after you register is to do two things at least. I'm going to take you through the whole shebang, but do two things. One is under that also known as section, click on the edit button here and add your other name variations. So if you've published using initials, 
if you have different spellings of your name, if your name is also expressed in a different language um, or different character set, put them in here. Make this available. This information um, is really important when you're using ORCID to help find your other publications, existing publications, to link them to your name. Okay? Cancel button. Um, you can add other information here like country, keywords. Again, not necessary at all. Um, we do have ways to add in websites. I've put in my LinkedIn uh, website URL and my ResearchGate URL here. Very, very easy to do. If you have a personal web page, this is a perfect thing to put in here. Um, and we also have ways to link to other identifiers, and I'll show you how that works. Yes? The country's not showing up. Here, let me see. Everyone's been able to add their name variations. Is anybody else having trouble? Just had to be refreshed. Okay, very good. All right. Now, as you add this information, you'll note that every single one of these things has a privacy setting next to it. The privacy setting is at the type level on, on this type of information. Okay, now if we go over to the other types of things one can connect to your record. Actually, do I have, does anybody have any questions right now before I move to connections? All right, um, the next thing we're going to do is look at this education section. Um, there's two pieces that I suggest people do. One is to add your other names, and the other is to add either your education or employment or both affiliations. This is a very straightforward process. Here you can see add education. Right now it says add manually, but have no fear. Click that button. Go, this will show up. Start typing in Stellenbosch. Okay, don't type the whole name in. You don't need to. <laughs> okay, yes. it'll auto-populate. And then you go down and say, ooh, which one of these do I want to select? I would highly suggest you select this top one, Stellenbosch University. Okay, you can click on that. If you click on that, it'll populate Stellenbosch and where you're located, okay, and the country. And you're done. Did that take very long? It took about five seconds. That's it. OK? And then add to list. If you want, you can add a start date. Now, what I'm hoping that Stellenbosch does is when they allow you to partner or co uh, connect your ORCID record with Stellenbosch, that they'll actually post your affiliation information into your ORCID record with the start date. Um, and also then validate that connection. So right now, if you do this and add to list, I'm not going to do it because I'm not a Stellenbosch. I'm going to hit the cancel button. You can see that I've added my own affiliation here. And all of you who have done this just now, it'll have your name there. Right? If Stellenbosch does this, it'll say Stellenbosch. So then as you go around as people in the community, you can point to your ORCID record, either like this or tell them using the API, the computer to computer connection, this is an electronic validation of my affiliation with Stonebosch. Okay? Now that was education. Um, there's also an employment. So students use the education section. Other people put in where education actually was. Um, and if you're employed by Stonebosch, you can do the same thing. It's exactly the same wizard. It says manual, but it's not really. You just start typing this in. Okay? And you can select that. All right? OK, so any questions thus far? Yes? Also in research. Pardon? Do you need a password to get Into the website? Into your record? Yeah. Did you forget it? Um, there's a little button said that says forget your password, and on you the, click on that on button. The on the sign in page, there's a forget your password record. I'm sorry. Which email will I register? Um, the email that you registered with. Where did you 
Yeah, so I'm going to show you how to add multiple emails to your record. Okay, I'm going to show you this and then we'll go back to how to add multiple emails. So we've gone through, well actually, why don't we do that right now? There's no reason I have to go the other way. Um, what you can do is, um, to that question, I can't remember which email I registered with. Ah, go over here to, yeah, this is where, come on, Lorraine, count settings. Okay, and there's a button here that says email. Click on the edit button. If you have a Gmail, Hotmail, whatever account, I highly recommend you add it here. You can also add your Stellenbosch email. You can add a previous email. As you move between organizations, just keep adding emails here. You can verify the email. As long as it's verified, that's where we'll send the message to. But you can log into your ORCID record with any of these email addresses. Yes? If I'm a affiliated with Stellenbosch University, do I have to use a Stellenbosch University email address? You don't have to, but I would say for best benefit, if Stellenbosch rolls out ORCID, you can, um, you'll get better benefit if you have it as one of the emails here. But again, because this registration process is separate from the Stellenbosch membership, you do not need to use your Stellenbosch University address to, to go through registration. And that's an important point, the yeah. ID is yours as an individual. Mm -hmm. So this is my, you know, Gmail account, this is my personal Gmail account actually. Um, this is my ORCID account and this is my previous job account. They're all in here, okay? Um, but I strongly suggest you verify the emails um, and you can also set privacy settings. So even though these emails are in here, these, the private ones, no one can see except me. We don't share those with anybody. You will not get junk mail because you put your email in here. It's really just a way of managing your account, okay? All right, and you can see how to add other emails. There's ways in here of managing your password. If you want to change your password, there's ways of managing your default privacy setting. You can set security questions. Oh, you're not supposed to see that. Um, <laughs> ah, uh, you can set email preferences in here, send me notifications, and you can also, if you want to close your account there. Now, the other thing I'm going to show you right now is the trusted organization list, and we'll show you. Does anybody have any trusted organizations already listed? So if you scroll down the page under trusted, does anybody see anything there yet? You have Scopus, because you already used Scopus Wizard, right? Does anybody else have anything listed? So I want this to be very clear, because we're going to go through and you set up some trusted, uh, trusted uh, relationships with organizations during the course of this training, okay? Um, it's important you can see who it is, you can see, uh, or the name, you can see the URL, when I approve them as a trusted organization, what type of access they have to my record, and the handy dandy little trash can if you decide I no longer want Copernicus to have access to my record. So you, the individual, have full control over the information in your record. Okay? If there's anything else in here I want to show you. Oh, the other fun thing, down at the very bottom, which for you should be right, <laughs> right there, is another thing called trusted individuals. Uh, if you would like to grant someone else access to help manage your account, you may do that. This person must have an ORCID ID. Okay, again, it is free to get an ORCID ID, but the only way we can manage this process, somebody has to sign on to the terms and conditions of ORCID, they have to have an ORCID ID. Okay, but anyone who has an ORCID ID, you can assign them here, and you can assign more than one person as a trusted individual for your record. That person will have access to your record and the ability to do pretty much anything in your record except reset your password. Okay? So if you register and you just don't have time to manage this for whatever reason, you can have somebody else help you. So from the library staff point of view, if somebody comes in and says, I want to register but I can't be bothered with this, you can ask them to set you up as a trusted individual and you can work with them on uh, managing their record. All right, so let's go back to the top. Um, if you're a developer, I'll show you another fun thing here. Um, if you're a developer, you can actually also register for access to our development resources and that all happens through this interface. So as Stellenbosch is doing the integration, the folks doing the integration are going to need to, where did it go? It's still thinking. 
um, you're going to need to register in here for um, for access to the, the sandbox, et cetera. That all is managed through this interface. Okay? All right, back to my ORCID record. So we've done education, we've done employment. Um, we're going to go look at funding for just a minute. The point here is just to show you how easy this is to do. Um, so let's say you have grants. Um, certainly you can add information in here manually. I really don't encourage it. It's a pain. No one wants to type stuff in. Um, let's try to use tools that we have handy to be able to add information or connect it to our record. Okay? So we have a search and link wizard. Right now we have something, a database called Uber Wizard. Um, it's just one. If there's other funding organizations out there in Africa that we should be linking to, like NRF, we're happy to set those up with the organizations. I'll show you how this works. This is an international database of funding. So they collect funding from public websites, essentially, or through connections directly with the funders. And they create a large repository of awards. So what you can do when you click on this is start off a workflow. So click. It'll take you to this page. This page is a handshake. This is where you're going to set up a trusted organization relationship. So you need to read these pages. What it says, it's Uber Wizard. They've asked for the following access to your record. Read your record, add funding items. As you see this, there's a little pop-up that tells you exactly what they would like access to in your record and what they're going to do with the information. If you say, yeah, that sounds like a great idea, yes? I actually don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I think they probably have NRF data because they probably because NRF publishes their data publicly, right? So yes. they probably have ingested it, but so I'm not that positive. Will be, uh, the one that we do need to chat to is Research Africa. Okay. And, and those are things on the data book this year for me to engage with them. Sorry, I'm working. Yeah. I mean, the goal here is instead of you guys having to do this, is that as you get funding, the funder will ask you for your ID when you apply. And then when you get the award, they'll actually post that information into your ORCID record, so you won't have to do this. So everything I'm talking about right now is really a way to connect to your existing works. This is not what we're expecting you to do on an ongoing basis. Okay, I wouldn't want anyone to have to do this on an ongoing basis. Okay, so for the stuff you already have, these are the tools to connect to those things. For anything new that you do, use your ORCID ID and those organizations will start to write that information into your record when it becomes public. Okay? Auto updates. So you've written this and you say, oh, that sounds great, and it says this application will not be able to see your password or other private information. Um, you click deny or authorize, you click authorize. What it's doing now is kicking off a search so you can see a bunch of stuff going off, whoopsie, down there. It's kicking off a search against the Uber Wizard database using your name or names that you have declared in your ORCID record, okay? And so then it says, oh, cool, look at this. We found some grants for you. Attention, please. Stanford University support services and library vendors are exhibiting in the library as part of our research week. You are welcome to come and browse. Freebies are also available. Everyone is welcome to make use of the research cafe in the library starting between 12 and 2. No one left. Usually when you say free food, everyone runs out the door, so thanks. I can tell you if we don't have any stuff. Like if there's nothing in there, okay. Yes, yeah, so they haven't, they haven't ingested it directly. Okay, yes, it's some work, yes. Um, I think also what is possible, though, as a member of Stellenbosch, they can push that to any place. So the Stellenbosch can push quite easily. But we do realize that there's also, you know, opportunity to work with other funders and other than that. Things like the Welcome Trust, we work with already. Um, so 
to try to do it. There should be European Commission Cordis in there as well. Uh, I think the Austrian, yes, so that's the European Commission grants. Um, so this is, again, this is, ORCID doesn't do this. This is a commercial product out there. Um, they have made, they built this wizard. They manage that database. And so we basically engage with organizations like this to make it easier to pull information or connect to information with your record. Um, so here you can see, for me, I have four grants listed. All I would have to do is either click select all or each one that is mine, then hit the, I've already done this, the next button on the bottom here, and it'll push it right back into my ORCID record, and that's all I'd have to do, and it would post it in my record. That's all the typing I've done is really clicking. Okay? So I'll see what happens if I click one of these. If I hit the next button, please review. Sounds great. We're going to submit this to ORCID. Yay! If you'd like to review it, click here. I'm going to go back to my ORCID record. Okay? Now, I've already done this. So here I've got my grants listed. I've listed these privates for some unknown reason. Just basically to show you that you can make stuff private. It's super easy to move it. Now it's in trusted party. Okay? Um, and also you can see, if I do this more than once, this particular, we need to work on this a little bit more. But if you import it, I now have two sources, right? They're both from UberWizard. I can choose which one. I want to display on the interface and which one will be preferentially available through the API. So we'll run into instances where if you do an import from more than one source, you're going to have the same paper potentially from two different sources. And this is the way we handle it is by allowing you to select which one is your preferred source, which one is displayed, and which one is available through the through the computer to computer interaction. All right, so that's funding. Any questions before I move on to works? All right, works. There are multiple ways to add or connect works to your ORCID ID. Um, you can add works uh, through a certain link, which I'll show you, through importing a file that's in BibTeX format. So if you have a bunch of stuff in Google Scholar, for example, you can export your Google Scholar record into a BibTeX file and then bulk upload that and connect it to your ORCID record if you want to go that way. Um, or you can add manually. Don't add it manually, it's a pain. Okay, you can, but this is really kind of a pain. Yeah? So if your text is that only citation text format? Yes, yes. So if you have been using any citation software, you have to export it to that format? Yes, okay. yes. So let's do the search and link. So there are multiple search and link wizards here. How many people in this room know Crossref is? I love asking that question. <laughs> so every one of you that has ever published a paper, most of you have ever published a paper, probably have something on their paper called a DOI, or a Digital Object Identifier. Okay? Crossref is the organization that assigns these uh, digital object identifiers to your paper. These DOIs are critical for managing access to your work on the internet. Okay? So Crossref if you've published anything that has a DOI, which is most of the stuff out there, not everything, um, will be available to you through the Crossref uh, wizard that's down here, Crossref Metadata Search. No one knows what this is, but it's got everything that has a DOI that's a paper. So that's usually the best first place to go to search for your stuff. There's other places that you can go that have more benefit than that. That's kind of a quick and dirty search. Um, if you have data sets that you have submitted to a data center, you can search the data site, uh, search for them using your data site search and link wizard. Okay? Data site, like Crossref, assigns digital object identifiers to data sets. They work with national libraries to do this. I really don't know what kind of relationships they have in Africa. I'd have to go look. Um, we also have Europe PubMed Central. Um, Europe PubMed Central, Researcher ID, and Scopus to ORCID have a really cool feature, which is if you use those wizards, you can not only import information, not the publication, information about the publication into your ORCID record really, really easily, you can also push your ID 
out into those data sets for your existing publications. And that means anyone searching those databases will get the information about you back accurately and easily, either searching for your name or your ID. So I would highly recommend engaging with those because it means that your existing works will now have an ID associated with them, not just in ORCID, but also in Scopus, in Europe PubMed Central, and in Web of Science. It means you need to go through the search and link wizard three times, and it'll mean you have three versions of an article in your record, but that's okay, because now anyone using Web of Science, Scopus, or Europe PubMed Central will find you easily and accurately. So we're gonna do all three of these, okay? <laughs> so bear with me. Um, we're gonna start with uh, probably the easiest one, is Europe PubMed Central. So click on the link. And I haven't pre-done this, so it's going to take as long as it takes you guys to get there. We're going to go through the same access permission request that we went through for the funder. Ugh. There we go. It opens it in a second window for some reason. So go to the second tab on your browser. I'm using Firefox. You guys are probably using Internet Explorer out there. Again, your PubMed Central has asked for the following access to your record. Read the record, add works to your record, okay? Again, if you hover over, it tells you exactly what that means. And here, there's another checkbox. This is kind of interesting. It also says, allow this permission until I revoke it. The funder had what we call a short-lived access permission. It lasts for about an hour. This permission here allows the permission to last for 20 years which means that if your PubMed Central is receiving information about you, they can actually, or, or receives an update to the information about your publication, let's say you fixed it at the source, if there was an error, they'll actually push that update back into your record. Okay, so that's what that means by allowing permission until I revoke it. If you uncheck that box, it means it will only allow that permission for this interaction. <coughs> You can click on the Authorize button, and that will kick off a search of your PubMed Central using your name or names on your record. And this is going to take a little <coughs> while because it's doing a search of all of your PubMed Central, but hopefully not too long. This is when the snacks would be handy. All right, 